Today we have invited a special guest. He is Dr. Ashok Gupta. Dr. Ashok Gupta is a renowned robotics surgeon. He is Padma Shri and a phenomenal, phenomenal person. He has done a lot of work with us in COVID initiative too. Let's talk to him and understand how India can lead in healthcare. Dr. Gupta, welcome to our show. Thank you very much. My indeed a pleasure for me to be on your show. Thank you. So Dr. Gupta, you know the title of our show is Confession of yes. a Futurist. Yes, yes. So do you have a confession for our audience? Yes, my biggest confession and weakness is a perfectionism. I do not like people not able to achieve 100% perfection. And I, that's my biggest drawback. Mm -hmm. And that is where sometimes I have to leave people lagging behind and they uh, they fall short of my expectation. So don't you think perfection is a very esoteric word because it's always in pursuit of perfection. Nothing is perfect in the nature of this world. No, not that way. I feel that whatever you want to give, you must give 100%. Mm -hmm. Either you are there or you are not there. True. True. Whatever you do, you must do with a 100% conviction and a full capacity and capability. In healthcare attitude, it has to be 100%. True, because you have life at a stake, so you yes. can't take chances. Yeah. I the doctor's understand. mistake always goes, has to be buried under. Yeah. It cannot it can be ruined. It cannot be it cannot be good. True. True. Engineer mistake, accountant mistake can be rectified. But doctor's omission cannot be. So, Dr. Gupta, you do very highly complex surgeries. Uh, calling you a plastic surgeon will be underrating you. Yes. So, so talking about, can you share some or one example of plastic surgery or the surgery you have done, which you never thought it can be even done? I have three very distinct examples of, uh, I would not say plastic surgery, exceptional contribution to humanity and society mm -hmm. through plastic surgery. Mm -hmm. One is an example of a child who was thrown in a jungle who was only four hours old. Oh, wow. He was abandoned. He was attacked by a wild animal. His half of the leg was eaten away by the animal. And he was in such a critical condition. I mean, you can imagine an abandoned child of four hours, four hours old. attacked by a wild animal, left abandoned in a uh, sugarcane field. And despite That's that, he sad. survived. He was brought to me in a very critical condition. Wow. It was four hours old. Now he's 18 years. Nice. I did about number of surgeries. He must be a fighter. He is 6.2 feet tall. He has scored 92% marks in UP State Board. Wow. Honored by the what Chief Minister. Story. What a story. And he is an excellent player of bas this, uh, basketball, football and uh, things. So there is no depth. So let's move forward. You and me get associated when we were working on a biggest problem. It's COVID-19. Yes. Second wave of India. I mean, we both talked for hours and uh, we find that the whole world need a new kind of health system. It's not just India's problem now. It's a global problem. And these kind of diseases will continue to happen. So what is your take on that? I think pandemic are, this is not the end of the pandemic. It's inevitable. Nor, nor this is the last pandemic. Pandemics are going to come. Pandemics has taught us so many things. And we had, as a medical professional, we had Actually, this is the biggest opportunity for us to learn something new. That it is not the prescription of medicine, which is the healthcare. Mm -hmm. It is the preparedness, mitigation, and the, the infrastructure support for a healthcare system. Mm -hmm. In India, we were exposed to so, many, so much of deficiency. None of the hospitals were prepared for a mass uh, in yeah, I mean, we have 1.3 billion population. Yes. So I always, uh, you know, on yeah. my shows, we talk about it. In US, we have 300 million people. Yes. In US, we, in India, we have 1.3 billion people. Yeah. Even the 5, be plus US best story. of the hospitals did not have enough stock of disposable, yeah. enough stock of disposable medicines, sure. uh, this thing. So then they realize how critical it is to maintain a good stock. Absolutely. How important it is to maintain a good stock of medicine, is, uh, infrastructure support. Paramedics. So what is next? What do you think India or world should do in your opinion? They we have a lot of entrepreneurs yes. who are listening our show. Yeah. Our show is Silicon Valley based. Yes. And you know, almost every single person is an amazing guy. Yes. Yes. Not that in India doesn't have yes. amazing people. 
so we are looking for challenges. The idea I have is, and what I really want to do it is spark the interest of the people. So if you can give them some problems which you think technology can solve, that would be amazing. I think the biggest stake of this is to invest in society, that society should become part of the healthcare provider. Okay. We have to start from the first responder program. Mm -hmm. Every single citizen in the country, irrespective of whether it is Europe, North America or India, every single citizen has got a responsibility to maintain basic infrastructure support for healthcare. Mm -hmm. When it comes to, say for example, hundreds of patients of COVID, they need transport support, they need uh, the other uh, support also, vaccine basic support, yeah. basic support. So it is the civic society which has to come forward, learn the basic thing. So it's almost like Singapore and Israel, they have that army mandatory training. Yes. So almost similar like that for healthcare. Yeah, we have actually, during my earlier tenure, I have suggested that every school kid and every college should know, student CPR should know the, the BLS, yeah. basic life support system. Sure. There's a man, that should be part of the mandatory system and every right. citizen yeah. must be trained for a first responder program. Sure, very true. So they I completely agree with you and we talked about it. Yes. Uh, but you know, the problem is we live in a very different society and people have to, they have to do it, right? So we talked at the IIT level, we talked about even medical colleges level. It's a pretty complex system. So. Let's talk more about technology because this is a behavioral yes, thing. Yes. What can we do with technology? Technologically, I think digital control, a remote control of a higher standard of So do you see care. like remote uh, surgeries, the kind of surgeries you do today is possible in future? That you are sitting here and you are stitching yeah. a patient in uh, Kuala Lumpur or uh, in Africa? I don't think as a future, it is already present. Oh, it is because happening. telemedicine and remote surgery, remote distance surgery, we were thinking about 20 years before. True. Now it has become a reality. I mean, I'm online, I'm still connecting with the people, those who are doing performing surgery in different parts. Mm -hmm. And we are observing the live surgery. We are saying, can you do this, you do that. Only thing, we don't have a remote access to that. True. So I think that is one thing with the robotic surgery, which is going to play a very vital role for all uh, surgical specialties mm -hmm. will also allow a remote control of the robotic control. So do you see in future we create hybrid programs where we have medicine and technology combined or you think it is going to be more of a collaborative approach? I think just to give an example, the, the earliest changes in the chest are better detected by CT scan. Uh, code. True. True. And Many a time, those changes cannot be even seen by a normal radiologist. Okay. But if those images can be clubbed together and put to a specialist through AI, my friend has developed a very good uh, system where even the earliest changes can be detected. So, and computer vision, vision technology basis. And early, earlier the treatment is started over the more various True. modalities, the morbidity and mortality is likely to be much Will less. Be reduced. Okay. So this is in reference to COVID, but as I said, Keith, this is not the last pandemic. We sure. don't know what is in the store next, and we don't know what sort of uh, viruses we are going yeah, to face. Yeah, unfortunately, I mean, why I'm laughing and chuckling is this is the same conversation I'm having with everybody I spoke to. Yes. And I'm in last one week, I made a lot of phenomenal people. So only way we can tide over is to be, be prepared for this. If there are 100 patients coming at a given time, which require 100% oxygen ventilator, mm -hmm. we should be ready for that. We should be ready with the alternate. We should be ready with the infrastructure and paramedics because it is not only doctors who sure. We need a trained nurses, we need uh, trained paramedics. Support staff. There has to be staff. reserve available at every district, every hospital level, which can be drawn from this. And that is what we say. I mean, I have, I have personally gone uh, in the earthquake in Nepal. I have gone to Buj and we realize how much is the casualty. 5,000 patients we were yeah. seeing in one day and I'm, there was no preparedness. Yeah. So natural calamities, man-made calamities are bound to happen. So Dr. Gupta, let's move forward. 20 years from now, our population will be approximately 9 or 10 billion people. Some think that a lot more people will die and some think it's going to be 10 billion people. Future will tell us. 
I personally believe in 20 years, we should get to a point when the illness become optional. Do you think it's possible? Hopefully, most of the surgeons and most of the doctors are working on the project of longevity of life. Longevity is a big, big thing. Big thing. Mm -hmm. Second thing, during my training in surgery, we were so excited to hold the knife and do surgery. <laughs> now we are so excited to use the digital technology and using a mouse or using the thing so that somebody else is operating on your behalf. And even that is likely to change that we don't have to use the hand level, probably a verbal command should be good enough. Mm -hmm. So that is what probably the, with the aging process of all surgeons realizing that they have tremors, so they are going more on remote control and verbal control. Sure. But this is likely to be feature of the and technology, engineering and uh, digital uh, process is going to play a very vital role. So let's talk a little bit about the confusion around mRNA based vaccine. Uh, we know Moderna is mRNA based and it's a phenomenal technology. It's the first vaccine of its kind. What other problems can it solve in your opinion that uh, kind of uh, drug development technology? Because to me it is a tech. Yes, we are, see the vaccine which has developed which is almost like an emergency process. Mm -hmm. Normally, the development of vaccine takes about four to five years time. True. Uh, the vaccine development, testing, retesting, and development of- Yeah, we put everything fast forward. And this here case. also, we realize the immunity which is generated is only short-lived. It is not a lifelong immunity. And probably we don't know during this process what will be the mutation, what will be the changes, and how different immune response will be the second dose or the second. Yeah. True. So that this should not be the full stop for the uh, research and development. We require a lot of r and D. I I mean, that is what you say, the opportunity which COVID has given to scientific community is phenomenal. We should not be losing on that. So let's talk about the research. So India, if we go back to our scripture thousand years ago, it feels like what people talk all the time is Ayurveda had all the answers and then western medicine came and it solves a lot of problems which was necessary and i'm not against or for any other kind of medicine why aren't there any hybrid kind of approach because ayurveda is does certain things and uh, surgery is because western science is amazing when it comes to surgery yes yes it, it's bar none it's phenomenal but when it comes to curing simple uh, cold it falls short yes to be very frank, allopathic medicine is only for acute problems. Mm -hmm. It is not good for chronic or continuous problems. Mm -hmm. Although there have been a lot of research work done in North American countries, European countries, including India also. Now there is a separate ministry of Ayush, yeah. which takes care of the traditional medicine and non, uh, non allopathic medicine. True. And there's a lot of work is being done. Yeah. But still we need to go back to our roots and understand the Ayurveda. True. A lot of people, unfortunately, a lot of people have studied very superficially and started claiming themselves as Ayurveda Chara <laughs> and started <laughs> medicine <laughs> for profit. True, true. Is there any parting advice you have for our audience? I think be honest and give your best 100%. 100%. 100%. Whatever you are getting in. You're a plastic surgeon. I thought you would say just do two mm more. Because the smile looks very different, <laughs> lips are completely no, different. Your more, than a, more than a plastic surgeon, I'm a dedicated teacher. I sure. have taught about more than 5,000 uh, students in doctors. surgery, about uh, 300 oh. well trained post doctors oh. all over the country and I all over the world. And I think the only, I mean, uh, again, I would like to quote a good surgeon is not recognized or remembered by the number of good surgeries he has done, but a number of good surgeons he has produced. True, that's true. So that, that's stand true for every technical thing. That's true. Every teacher. That's true. Well, that's a big reason I'm supporting startups uh, and I'm hoping that I'll be able to contribute yes. and give yes. back uh, whatever I have learned in so many years. Thank you so much, Dr. Gupta. Welcome. Welcome. I want to thank all of our audience, our sponsors, NTTVC, IIT Delhi Excellence Foundation and Troises. Thank you.
Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Thank Dr. Dr. Thank you. My pleasure.